Wednesday, May 4th, 2022. Welcome to Big Screens and TV Streams live from the Grand Forks Best Source Studios. For those watching live, please interact with us by calling or texting in your questions or comments at 701-213-0863 or contribute comments and questions in the live chat by tuning in live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. on gfbestsource.com. I'm Dale Coolis. Joining me today is Paul. Welcome. Yo. And producer Katie will be joining us momentarily. <laughs> uh, so, Paul, Katie, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I have to say it because of today's date. May the oh, 4th get out be here. with you. Blarg, blarg, blarg. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a little bit of Star Wars today on, on TV. Uh, like Return of the Jedi was on TV. I saw it in passing. I watched like five minutes of it. So I was like, oh, man. Gosh, yeah. When was the last time you saw one of the first three Star Wars movies? Just even oh, a little bit of it. The first ones? Oh, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. I kind of binged watched, you know, all of them probably six, seven months back. But even the the oldest ones, I had a hard time watching them. Yeah, I know. But whenever I hear the Star Wars movies, I, I, like the one of the first things that comes to mind is a cantina theme song. That's always that's always a fan favorite. And you know, just like the cantina, uh, you can find your favorite beverages at the Southtown Poorhouse. Where every, may, I don't know if it'll be as great as day at the cantina in Star Wars, but for today, every day and every day, it's a great day at the Southtown Poorhouse. Stop in for your favorite drinks, and of course, happy hour with half off apps and taps every day from four to six p.m. And you can't forget about their Buck Burgers on Tuesdays and the awesome steak specials on Thursdays at 6. Make sure to check out the South Town Poorhouse events page to find out when your favorite band is playing live. For this weekend, on Friday, they have October Road. And on Saturday night, they have DJ and the Atomica. So every day is a great day at the South Town Poorhouse where you won't have to worry about who will shoot first. They were located at 2015 Library Circle next to the Grand Cities Mall, open Tuesday through Saturday from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m., and they're now hiring with great pay, flexible hours, part-time or full-time employee discounts, and free cover on band nights. Yeah, go there tomorrow. Get yourself a margarita for a Cinco de Mayo. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's, yeah, that, that is another big, big theme day coming up. And, uh, yeah, that's, it's all about the days and the months this year. And I know a lot, um, in March, they, they, we got the Star Wars Day today. And, of course, Cinco de Mayo tomorrow. A couple Last couple of years, they had in March, they established March 10th as are, are, are you familiar with what that would spell katie if you put march 10th together abbreviate it a little bit and, and just look at it at a glance march 10th Oof. Mm, march no i don't on the top of my head mario so like the last few years nintendo oh. has been making march 10th mario day they they'll do like sales for mario games and stuff like that like free oh free downloads on their websites, things like that. So all, all the brands, all the, all the places are catching up on it. So uh, uh, one that did not catch up on it, though, is, uh, is the, first, uh, the first movie we'll be talking about, we'll be reviewing today. And I think we're going to try out a new thing here, see how it goes, right, Katie? Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, test this out. Yeah, so we're testing now. We're actually going to be playing a tr a, 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 an abbreviated trailer, so you can get, get, get an idea for this movie we'll be reviewing. Ambulance, it hit theaters a few weeks ago. New Michael Bay-directed movie, pretty much where two robbers steal an ambulance where after a heist goes awry. So here is a trailer. Officers down in front of the bank. Automatic weapons being fired. You want to drive or can I drive? Bank robbery suspects have taken an ambulance. I got a cop shot. You gotta get him to the hospital. We doing hostages now? Yeah. I came to you for a loan. You're my brother. Have I ever gotten you anything that I couldn't get you out of? Lock everything down. Here. We're just trying to get home. We don't get to walk uh, off into the sunset. Several years. It's been mostly Transformers oh, movies. Oh. Michael Bay has been doing the last decade or so. He has done a couple others. Pain and game. It's very interesting. Uh, crime, Get drama, out. some action, but Get a chill big out. epic Get story. This, as you can see from the trailer, it's more like a What's return to form. So, if you remember Michael Bay movies from like uh, 90s and the 2000s, Con Air, The Rock, The Island, maybe. But uh, yeah, this is a return to just good old fashioned Michael Bay thriller action, chases, heist. This is a good old fashioned chase movie. So, hey, yeah, what's up, yeah guy? and you can see just from the actors here, we got Jake Gyllenhaal, and uh, I, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce this other actor's name. His, his brother, Danny and Will Sharp, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is Danny, and then this is Yaya Abdul-Mateen II as Will Sharp. They're his brothers. 
and you can see from here they're they are leading a heist uh there's a bunch of other heist uh colleagues uh but uh, uh they used to be uh, Jake Gyllenhaal isn't the best at recruiting a, a, a heist crew. They 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 meet their comeuppance very home. early on. They they they're very very uh, ineffective. And uh, like one of the heist guys, uh, they one of the crew, uh, as they put it, they wear flip flops. Another guy as who's like uh, Jake Gyllenhaal refers to as Mel Gibson from Braveheart. He calls them Bravehearts, and you're like, oh, these guys aren't gonna last. So eventually, the heist goes wrong, as you can see in the trailer. They uh, they 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 pretty much command uh they managed to grab the ca the cash uh, jake J uh, Hall and or the sharp brothers they command an ambulance and they're just on the run from the cops for about a good hour and a half and uh yeah so i don't know from that trailer did you did, did that kind of less vibes of transformers more vibes of more your traditional michael bay films con air the rock stuff like that so yeah i, I mean I, I could see the rock you know coming out in that but again i mean as soon as um you said michael bay and I, it didn't occur to me at first that uh, that was Transformers. Then I was like, oh, wait, Michael Bay, that, that's the Transformers guy. And then I saw a lot of the similar action scenes of Transformers. It's kind of like he's he's got his style. Um, he doesn't really seem to know how to do any other style, though. Yeah, he, like the, the very... Uh deliberate slow motion uh crashes effects like the the, the way the scenery smashes up and explodes yeah, and all the, the camera panoramic and the lights that appear in there and everything sun flares of another one of his trademarks yeah yeah so i yeah i mean it's, it still looks good i mean you know it does it did look a lot like the rock yeah i would say that yeah and those are these are the Michael Bay movies. Uh, they're, they are fun to see in the theaters, at least when you're uh, talking about going back to the Con Air, The Rock. Those ones is, is, is uh, iconic staples there. And even the Transformers movies, even though I was not that much of a fan of them. Other, the first one I kind of liked, but each one kind of got to be more and more of a chore to get through. But uh, his movies are designed to be seen in theaters or, just, or big elaborate home, home theater setups with uh, awesome surround sound and, and the big screen. Transformers pissed me off. No, I, I, I am with you. Uh, each, each, each and every Transformer movies, this got louder. <laughs> was, yeah. Well, uh, not only did the movies just, I mean, you know, the, the jokes were terrible. Uh, you know, I mean, there were so many things that I could say that were bad about them. But the thing that drove me nuts about them right from the even the very first one was the way that they transformed. Mm. I'm like, you can, you can literally take a toy and have it turn into a robot with like four moving parts. So why is all this, you know, with things going on in that movie? Why didn't Optimus just have his arms come out, roll up, and do it just like the toys did? The toys and the, the 80s cartoon. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, deep dive backstory if you look into that where like they even had to fight to get the original voice cast from the cartoons on there they, like that almost didn't happen and and like just like a lot of the hollywood versus uh, the uh, the getting stuff and they, they just, had to, they had to fight to get stuff in that was representative of the brand yeah yeah it had it it literally had nothing to do with transformers they just basically just stole the name yeah. yeah, so I, I I was just very disappointed in that movie. We'll have to do a Transformers special one day. No. No, we don't. <laughs> no, I, no, that was no, a joke. Don't. That <laughs> was a joke. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Katie's a fan of Transformers movies? No, I'm not. No, yeah. It'd be funny just to make you mad. Oh. <laughs> Suffer. Yes, yes, yes. Well, then they got Optimus, and he's, you know, he's got flames on him, and he's uh, one of the newer rigs. Like, why didn't they, they should have had him just be the original red flat nose semi from the, you know, just... Well, hopefully his days as, uh, with the Transformers movies are, are behind him. He did five of them, so I think he got them out of his system, uh, or directed five anyways, and I think he helped like produce Bumblebee. But uh, but he, he did direct Six Underground before this. Did you see that one? On uh, It was a Netflix original action movie, Ch Heist, Chase, Robbery. Yeah, I think I did see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so, but this is wait, like... Wait, that one was with um, Ryan Reynolds, wasn't it? I believe so. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't very good. And uh, yeah, but this is his return to the theater uh, action movies because yeah, that Six Underground was a Netflix exclusive, and so yeah, as you saw from the trailer, the brothers there, uh, Will, uh, he's he's an ex marine and he's hard up for money because his insurance won't cover uh, experimental surgery, and he picks he just happens to pick the wrong day to ask his criminal brother that he's on a very shaky relationship with 
for help for her. he's like oh if you need a hand because he knows he, d he has this legacy they explain it in the movies of doing like just all these uh just being a a, a crime background a long time robber but so he, he was just going to go there so if you need some help with like a small job or j i just need some cash he's like oh good i'm about to go on this big elaborate heist for 16 million dollars you could be the driver <laughs> so <laughs> just picks the wrong day to go in and of course and you saw in the trailer the heist goes wrong they take uh, they they take a cop hostage. They shoot they shoot him. They take him hostage, and they later take the ambulance hostage, which the cop happens to be in. And uh, so yeah, I'd say like the a, a good seventy percent of this movie takes place in the ambulance, and that that poor cop, yeah, uh, yeah, he's he. he he gets he goes through the ringer through the film and then like we got that emt in there with with him as well uh uh that's being played by uh i i got the name right here uh isa gonzalez as camp and she is tremendous in the role just kind of like you know she's like kind of like playing the kind of like she's like serving as the audience here you know should should you know why, why am i with these guys you know i should try and stop them but meanwhile i gotta save this cop's life and the cops, because they got the cop hostage, it's pretty much keeping the cops on their tail and not trying to, like, uh, do, like, you know, the standard cop chase, like, you know, ram them to the side of the road. It's kind of like the, you know, why you you're, can't help but think, you know, why don't the cops just try and lay a spike strip or something like that or, or just do something? But, you know, they got a cop on life support pretty much here. So that's why this chase is lasting as long as it is. This big cat and mouse chase is really exhilarating. You can see from the trailers, like, lots of explosions, lots of lots of stuff and they kind of give a, a little bit of a backstory where the brother danny he's like he has a he's a little bit of a history of being a pro driver just you know and with his marine background just like really being the master behind the wheel for getting every unbelievable amount of speed and street moves with with the ambulance to outmaneuver the cops uh there's a lot of you know with a lot of michael bay movies you know maybe you probably relate to this paul with con air the rock what have you there's plenty of yeah right moments with like no this can't happen this can't happen like with like the way they smash into so many concrete barriers that are conveniently placed to get you know take out certain police vehicles and uh just yeah lots of bobs and weaves fighting the authority figures off and uh and the, you know the cops are trying to be on their tail trying to stay one step ahead of them eventually they try and lay some traps but you know they're out maneuvering them and it's just really fun to keep up with uh i don't know with uh this is one that I couldn't help but cross my mind seeing this movie. I'm kind of wondering what you guys think of it too. But Michael Bay, I always think of him as being an artist of making everything out of nothing. Like you can see, like there's not a, even though this is R rated, there's not like a lot of like over the top gratuitous violence, not a lot of deaths. There's a little bit of it here and there. And towards the end, there's a couple of scenes, but through a, a good chunk of like the first like 70, 80% of the movie, there's, it, there's only like the action is, it, they keep the thrill factor going as you know the ambulance chase there's a lot of and you saw a little bit in the trailers there are so many carts of produce that get demolished and of course you know like you were saying paul earlier they're like the camera's placed just right and it, 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 it is captured just right the the way the color and the filming and the, the lighting is just right where you know even though it's just an ambulance hitting like a a, a poor innocent produce stand it explodes at like max just just yeah where you can't help but get a little bit of that theatrical endorphin rush out of it yeah and and there's yeah i want to say the the amount of produce demolished shots in here is probably in the double digits <laughs> <laughs> they just happen to be all over the place and along with the concrete barriers just to keep that the adrenaline's going and yeah it all culminates in an insane final act without getting anything away and uh i'll give a word to the wise if you're squeamish it, this will definitely test your squeamish factor because there's a couple of parts where I was like, they're not going to go this far. And then sure enough, I'm like, uh, no, they are going this far. And I'm like, they're teasing something really bad is going to happen. They, oh, they did go there. How did this just get an R rating? Because there's parts of me thinking this wouldn't have get cleared for theaters with an R rating that, you know, they've got the the kill switch, the NC-17 rating. And really? Yeah, there, there are some very, very... I was only I caught it at a weird early matinee showing earlier this week, uh, so like I had the theater to myself. So I, I was, but parts of me couldn't wonder where. Man, I wonder how the theater would be reacting. Part of me just thinking there might be some people running to the bathroom <laughs> at a couple of parts. So word to the wise on this one. So how, how do you guys handle your squeamish for movies? Oh, I'm just fine. My my question is, um, so is this movie ambulance or as my in laws would call it ambulance? Um, oh gosh, there, there, the there's a lot of the cast. Ambulance. 
Lance. All right. I've Ambul heard ambulance. I've heard so many fun uh, oh. goofs at pronouncing that word over the years, and they, they actually they're a lot of the cast pronounces it, uh, enunciates it many different ways throughout the film. I'm like, okay, this person's saying. I uh, heard am ambulance, ambulance, or ambulance. Um, uh, it's yes. an A, not an E, ambulance. Yes, yes. Am no, but ambulance. Ambulance is ambulance. There's a U, too. <laughs> ambulance. But, you know, depending on the part of the country, it all it's pronounced differently everywhere. Oh, yeah, so, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, at least in Michael Bay, in Michael Bay uh, terminology, anyways. But, yeah. It, <laughs> if a Boston person were to say it. Yes. Ambulance. <laughs> You gotta rock that Boston accent, yeah, Katie. Yeah, right. Yeah, they're... khakis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the wrong got, drum. If we got his khakis in the, in the ambulance, <laughs> hock the car out the garage or something. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. The guy from Boston on our tennis team, and he just talks. It just pisses me off. J Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> does some fun Boston accents in some movies. He's in uh, Manchester at the Sea uh, and uh, uh, Stronger. He does some. F he, he make he makes sure to work. He, he has his, his background in Boston accents, but not for this one. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is awesome in this. His character is so just kind of like how we were talking on last week with Nicolas Cage going in full-on cage mode, but it's not as over the top. He comes off very believable being just a criminal madman, just doing anything to get the job done. But yeah, really good final act. And like the way the final act plays out too, you're like, how are they going to wrap this up? But they find a nice way to wrap it up because you're they kind of make it... You know, kind of like Con Air, you know, it's like, do you want to root for the bad guys? No, you don't want to root for the bad guys. So mm -hmm. I, I can already tell you I'm going to give this a 50% a approval mm -hmm. because every single Michael Bay movie I've ever seen, I'm like, okay, 50% like it, 50% hate it. He can, he just never, never scores 100 with me because right. he's, he just can't get out of his... His comfort his, zone. His, yeah, his mindset of just like everything is the same. I mean... I, I mean, I can go down the list. So The Rock, Armageddon, Con Air, you know, all mm -hmm. of those. They're all the same movie. They're good, and they suck at the same time. Yeah, I like to say, like, they're, they're fun to see once at the theater, maybe one more time yeah, way he, down the yeah, line. He, that's a good way to put it. Like, he's one of those ones I, uh, I'll watch the movie, I'll enjoy it, but I would never watch it again. Right, yeah. And that's how I describe this. Definitely see it once, uh, op, uh, ideally in a good theater or home theater setup. Uh, the Rotten Tomatoes uh, aggregates for it so far is it's doing pretty good. Critics, 69% aggregate, 69% of critics approve it. Audience is a bit better, 88% of audience approval. So, but yeah, I give it a recommend to see once, but yeah. But I definitely have missed this version of Michael Bay. A big step up from the Transformers stuff. So glad to see him kind of getting back to his roots for better and worse. <laughs> so... A friendly reminder for those watching live, please interact with us by calling or texting in your questions or comments at 701-213-0863 or contribute co comments and questions in the live chat by tuning in live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. on gfbestsource.com. Hey, everyone in the chat, what's your favorite Michael Bay movies or ones that have just irked you the wrong way over the years? We want to hear about them. We'll, 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 we'll interact with you on the air here. So uh, just to kind of quickly go over some of the big noteworthy releases for this week, uh, we got... Hitting streaming via Netflix, uh, Grace and Frankie, season, season 7, part 2, the finale for this longtime Netflix series, which is all about a relationship, whirlpool of relationship drama. Uh, that, uh, that was one that I saw on my rundown list there. I, I was not familiar with it, though. Uh, Undone, season 2, is a s s hitting Amazon Prime video streaming this week. And it's the second season of an animated series with voices by Rosa Salazar, Angelique Cabral, Constance Marie, and Bob Odenkirk, our favorite actor from uh, Nobody and the uh, Breaking Bad series. This dramedy centers on Alma, a woman who, after a brush with death in a car accident, discovers new abilities to time travel and find out the truth behind her death. Crush is a movie streaming on Hulu that hits this week, and it stars Paige, played by Rowan Blanchard, an inspiring young artist who decides to join her high school's track team, a choice that ends up changing her life in more ways than one, and it also stars Megan Mullally and Michelle Bateau. And this is the one we're, we're really psyched for this week. I think it goes without saying it should be our pick of the week. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness hitting theaters this Friday or the early Thursday showing. I know our local theater is showing it pretty much all day on Thursday. And it's pretty much a journey into the unknown with Doctor Strange, who, with the help of mystical allies, both old and new, traverses the mind-bending and dangerous alternate realities of the multiverse to confront, to confront a mysterious new adversary. And it's, 
and of course, Benedict Cumberbatch is returning as Doctor Strange and also starring Elizabeth Olsen, Benedict Wong, and directed by uh, none other than Sam Raimi, directing his first comic book movie since... Uh, Katie, I don't know, did you see the original two Spider-Man movies uh, with Tobey Maguire from the early 2000s? I know I saw one of them. I don't know which one's which. Yeah, but yeah, he, he directed those two. And, and we're not actually directed the first three Spider-Man movies, but the first two Spider-Man movies are very well critically acclaimed and kind of helped kick off with the X-Men movies, helped kick off the comic book movie boom. So this is, yeah, Sam Raimi making his return to comic book movie directing. So I'm, I'm really psyched for it. I know we we're talking before the show, Paul. You're, you are just as hyped as well. Yeah, except uh, I didn't know that it was being directed by Sam Raimi. I thought it was going to be uh, Favre. Favre. Oh, yeah, John Favre. Because yeah. he's the one that did all the Iron Mans and everything, and all the other Marvel movies, right? He, he, d he did the first two... Uh, I mean, he did, he did uh, Avengers, right? No, no jo John Favre, he directed the first two Iron Man movies, and uh, then I think he helped produce other ones. Uh, he may have returned for one other one. I, well, who did, I, I, who I think did, he did Ant-Man, one of the last Ant-Man movies, did, I want to say. Who did the Avengers? Uh, the Avengers were... Uh, the, fir the first two Avengers were Joss Whedon, and then the, the Avengers 3 and 4, they were uh, done by the, the Russo brothers that did the first two Captain America movies. Oh, okay. Well, I don't... Uh, yeah, I, now I got mixed feelings about this. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be good. Uh, I'm wondering if it... You know, I saw, like, the animated version, kind of seeing, like, the the evil Doctor Strange versus the normal Doctor Strange. So I think this movie is going to be really, really cool. I'm, I'm really excited for it. Uh, if uh, anybody from the River uh, Cinema is watching right now, we still need to hear if we can come over there and do a remote for it. Um, Absolutely. But, yeah, I mean, Doctor Strange, I never really followed him in the comics. I didn't really know too much about him, but after watching the other movies, I mean, he's almost like one of the most powerful characters of all of them. I, I, I'm, I'm really excited for this movie. I think it's going to be really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm super incredibly excited for it. I really like how he's been portrayed in the movies. I've been familiar with him a little bit in the comics over the years. I didn't. He's had some solo series over the years, but he's, he's kind of like their safety net where if, if the writers for a comic book uh, uh, major events, if something goes wrong, if it's not received well, usually Doctor Strange would come in there, cast a spell, and reset it and be like, all right, this last year or two of story arcs that the fans hated, poof, never happened. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of how it's, he's being portrayed in the movies, but not that dramatic. But uh, yeah, he, like you said, he's definitely being portrayed as one of the most powerful characters in the MCU. So. And now that Sam Raimi, he's directing this now under the, you know, the guidance of the MCU umbrella instead of the Sony Pictures brand. So usually they're a bit more hands-on and, and better consultants anyway. So I'm, I have good faith that this should deliver. Yeah, and I saw, you know, some of the trailers for it, and it looks like it's going to be going right along with that, you know, kind of animated version. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's all kinds of cool things that he, he you know, he does and my understanding is that you know he's going to have the to go against this evil Doctor Strange who used um, a bunch of spells to make himself as powerful as possible, um, taking like stuff from al al like alternate universes and somehow gaining their power. I don't know. I we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. Yep. Um, Def definitely, may possibly stay tuned for maybe bonus uh, live coverage this weekend, maybe. We'll see. It's up in the air. But definitely, uh, either next week or week after, we'll be doing a, a pretty thorough review of it. Yep. So uh, we'll keep moving things along here. Paul, I know you said you saw this one. Uh, this is, uh, you know, we kind of ref I referenced earlier Jake Gyllenhaal being in a boxing movie with his Boston accent in uh, Southpaw. Uh, but this is a different boxing movie from a couple of years ago, uh, Jungle Land. And it's uh, two brothers who try to escape their circumstances by traveling across the country uh, for a no-holds-barred boxing match that becomes a fight for their lives. Oh, yeah, I just watched this the other... Oh, wait, no, did I watch it? Yeah, I just watched this the other day. It was terrible. Yes, yes. This I movie sucked. Not a fan. Oh, God, I was mad. Uh, uh, get, get, get some booze. Get yeah. some booze. Yeah, I, I completely forgot about it because I was going to mention it to you that uh, I watched this. And, yeah, it was it was awful. Yeah, I, I kind of got in here. I watched a couple of clips in here just to kind of get a feel for it. They're like, Of course, they have brothers that are a little hard up on their luck here, and they, they're trying to kind of change things around by taking like am i getting this right they're kind of just trying to find odd jobs and underground fights but then they get a second chance by competing in a high stakes four hundred thousand dollar tournament yeah it's yeah they got uh 
I think some like prostitute that's with him and he's like trying there's this kind of like love affair going on but uh, his brother that's like his trainer you know he was in pacific rim and uh sons of anarchy you got he, jack o'connell and charlie hunnam are the two main brothers here yeah he, the last three or four movies i've seen him in have just they've all just flopped oh really as i mean as far as i was concerned so but yeah i mean it was it was just boring. They're trying to build up to the big tournament here, trying to kind of like yeah, maybe like a Warrior where they're leading up to that big one no, two night no. tournament, but not really. No. So what happened is, uh, so his little brother um, could, was, was like a Golden Glove boxer. He could have gone uh, kind of big time, but his older brother, who was his trainer, uh, cheated in some way, shape, or form. I can't remember exactly what. So his little brother got kicked out of the boxing. Um, career type of deal. So he becomes a bare knuckle boxer in alleys and that kind of stuff. And then they get tied up with a, some type of drug dealer, criminal guy, and they owe him some money because he screwed something else up. And so he keeps like pimping his little brother out to these boxing matches to try to uh, repay this debt. And, yeah, and then they're going to go to this, you know, big tournament or whatever, but they end up having this, like, prostitute chick that they're supposed to bring with them. And it, and it just has this weird side story to it. But, yeah, it was just... Didn't it do was, it for you. It was just dumb. Yeah, I kind of got on here. I, I, I watched a couple of clips of some of the fights in the movie. There was, like, a two-on-one parking lot parking lot fight for a car and uh that seemed all right but i was just i just checked out just a couple of random fights that were the fights at least fun to watch no no not really yep but no, this, is, this is this one's a hard pass hard pass yeah sounds good yeah i saw them it was kind of got middling aggregate scores nothing too kind of like in the 40s there but uh you know one thing we will not give in the 40s on a hard pass we'll give a high high recommendation to is our friends at oh for heaven's cakes in the grand cities mall where there's nothing better than treating yourself to some good homemade baked goods um i i just uh yesterday i had one of their awesome uh gummy worm dirt pudding uh cupcakes and yeah definitely high recommendation on that one uh so yeah that's where Oh, for heaven's cakes come in because they got the best cupcakes and they're great for special occasions or or just a treat like i had yesterday and you know special occasions they got graduation it's may so graduation open houses they're the place you want to call to get those early pre-orders in for your graduation cakes so they make incredible specialty items by order or just walk on in to find out more while you're there, enjoy home homemade lunch and soup with keto, gluten-free, vegan, and diabetic options. And if you're a business owner and you just want to treat your employees for a special day of treats, check out their monthly employee discounts. Oh for Heaven's Cakes is on the north back side of the Grand Cities Mall, open Tuesday through Friday from 10 to 4, and on Saturdays from 9 to noon. If you want to call them up, get those pre-orders for your graduation cakes in, 701-757-CAKE. That's 701-757-2253, or go to O for Heaven's Cakes at yahoo.com for email inquiries. Be a beautiful cupcake and a world full of muffins, O for Heaven's Cakes in the Grand Cities Mall. So that is uh, bringing us up to, our, I think, our final main review of the day here. Uh, actually, we got, uh, actually, before we get into that review, I do got just a couple of quick news items here to go over here. I know we're going to be, our last review is going to be for a big Netflix show, but uh, one news item that hit is that Netflix picked up an eight-episode series from the creators of Cobra Kai uh, that TBS was originally going to back, but they pulled out of it, and it's a show called Obliterated. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this one, Paul, but the, the synopsis for it is a high, it is a high-octane action comedy that tells the story of an elite special forces team who thwarts a deadly threat to Las Vegas. After their celebratory party filled with booze, drugs, and sex, the team discovers that the bomb they deactivated was a fake. The now-intoxicated team has to fight their way through their impairments and overcome their personal issues to find the real bomb and save the world in a not-so-desired state. So that has the potential to be cool, coming from the creators of Cobra Kai. Yeah, uh, I, I, at first it sounded really dumb until you told me that uh, now they're all shit-faced and <laughs> they, they got to try to <laughs> try to figure this out. Now it's being pretty funny. Guys, we can do this. <laughs> Cut the wire. Which wire? All of them. 
get your MacGruber. <laughs> <laughs> you know, MacGruber? No, you don't know where MacGruber? I haven't seen that oh, forever. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, 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 could, that has potential to be cool. I trust the creators on this one. So yeah, look for that on Netflix in a year or so. Uh, the other uh, news item here is that uh, this is kind of cool. I don't know, were you guys a fan of that 70s show, the sitcom from, oh, I guess, like a, about a oh. dozen or so years ago? Heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah, I watched it like from the first seasons and stuff, and then I just kind of lost interest. I watched a few seasons off and on during this one. I enjoyed it, and it's one of those ones, you know, if you just happen to come across it on cable or streaming, you may watch an episode or two. But, uh, uh, yeah, Netflix got uh, five of the cast members. They got, yeah, Topher Grace, Mila Kunis, Ashton Kutcher, Laura Prepon, and Wilmer Valderrama. They'll, they'll be making guest appearances in the sequel series, that 90s show on Netflix. It's kind of like Fuller House, where they're focusing on a new generation of kids while the original actors will be coming on to make uh, a cameos or s small appearances. So, uh, yeah, so the, the only one who's not returning is Danny Masterson Hyde, who was kind of ordered to stand trial on three counts of rape. So, yeah, he won't be involved. <laughs> who? Yeah. Well, which one was that? He, he had the big curly hair, the big, the I... super big stoner uh, in, in that really? semi. Really? Yep. Mm -hmm. Katie, is this ringing a bell for you? I think the, mus the Mohawk or whatever. Yeah, but guy. for what it's worth, he Danny Masterson is proclaiming his innocence. But yeah, he's in the middle of a big court trial for all that, so he won't be he won't be involved in the in this new show. But yeah, it's set in '95, revolves around Le Leia Foreman, the daughter of Eric and Donna, and she visits her grandparents for the summer. Of course, yeah, the parents from that '70s show they're returning also. Okay. Uh, okay. Kurt Ward Smith and Deborah Joe Rope. They're back to portray Red and Kitty. And yeah, so yeah, it's the, so you meet a whole new generation of kids. And uh, yeah, the original cast will be there to make their little appearances here and there. And yeah, so it has the potential to be cool. Of course, it's called That 90s Show, not That 80s Show, because there was a That 80s Show on Fox. It only lasted, I think, for like 10 episodes. I don't know if you remember that one. Nope. Yep. Nope. Best left in the past. So yeah, look for That 90s Show on Netflix in a year or so. So yeah. And the last thing I got is CW canceled uh, the Legends of Tomorrow show after seven seasons, joining Batwoman for the other CW DC show not returning this fall. The only DC show slated for this fall on CW are uh, the final season of Flash and Superman and Lois. And, you know, CW is rumored to being sold from the new merger company of Warner Brothers Discovery. So CW's future may be in limbo along with these shows. Uh, were you a fan of the CW DC shows? I watched them for a few years. Uh, they could have done better. Yeah. yeah. I've, I, I've never been a huge fan of DC, but yeah. I, um, lo I loved Arrow. I, I stuck with that and the first few seasons of The Flash and then even the first couple seasons of Legends of Tomorrow. But then you kind of just got watch all the shows follow the same formula season after season with a little bit of a difference but yeah once arrow ended i just i just quit cold turkey on them all i i, I saw a post that i thought it was pretty funny that pretty much sums up all the dc movies is that uh i don't like watching dc movies because they're too dark mm. he's like mm. no no not like like dark like Mentally wise, like dark, like I can't see them. Oh, <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're all like the the cameras are like turned down to like whoa. Yeah, yeah you can't uh, see what the hell is going on. They 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 do definitely have that's that's one of their trademarks. Maybe not all of them, but a good chunk of them are. Uh, yeah, they definitely have that darker t darker to both both in both aspects actually. Mm -hmm. Not, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm I'm, a f I'm usually a fan of them, but I and I, I think at one point CW had like I think five DC shows going on. It just got to be too much. Mm -hmm. So. But uh, I can't stop yawning. But maybe this next review won't keep, won't keep your yawns going, Katie, because this is Paul's yeah, long-awaited uh, uh, coverage here. I will give a quick heads up. He's going to be talking about the part two of the final batch of episodes that dropped for season four of Ozark. Uh, their last set of episodes. The show is closing. I'll refer you to our previous Big Screens episode on January 26, called "Stabbed in the Ozarks," for Paul's review of part one of season four. And so for, yeah, part two, it's if you're unfamiliar with the show, it's a financial advisor drags his family from Chicago to the Missouri Ozarks where he must launder money to appease a drug boss. And it's all it, it's definitively done now. Right, Paul? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, the ending kind of sucked. Did, um, did you end up binging through this pretty quick then? Eh, I was up until three in the morning trying to finish this stupid thing because people were on Facebook trying to ruin it for me, which... Then I come to find out that they're all just lying anyway. But Boo. so, so haha, ha, yeah, yeah, you guys are so funny. 
But now this last season, it was good. You know, there was a lot, there was a lot of things in there that I thought were a little bit ridiculous. Uh, I was not a fan of the ending. I really didn't get it. Um, and I don't know. Am I doing any spoilers here? Uh, we, we could keep it general for like maybe like the first minute or two here, and then like we'll give a spoiler warning here in case you, maybe just some general thoughts. Like I was kind of doing a little bit of research. I looked up a couple of scenes here. On, it kind of looked up like they're leading up a lot of twists leading up to a big vote for this final uh, batch of episodes. That's kind of what I gathered. I don't know if that's ringing a bell or not there from what you saw. A big vote? Yeah, like a, a big vote. Uh, well, they got the, so they're working with that uh, the Mexican drug cartel boss that they got thrown in prison by trying to work with the FBI with him, and then the FBI double-crossed him. Threw him in jail, then uh, his nephew kind of takes things over. Nephew ends up getting offed. And then his mom wants revenge, and now it's a battle between the drug pin that's in jail and his sister who's in Mexico. And yeah, I don't, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. I mean, it, it was a good story, but again, the ending, it almost seemed like the ending was still set up for another season. Like it felt like they had to leave a little little cliffhanger in case they decided to do a spinoff show or come back maybe several years later. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right. So like, if we do do like, let's say uh, for people still keeping up with the show, let's just do like a uh, one minute of spoilers here. So so people listening, uh, jump ahead one minute starting now. Uh, you know, watching past uh, video recaps of past seasons remind me with uh, some other shows where they're constantly changing the cast, writing off characters. A lot of characters are getting killed off. Did this last uh, batch of episodes, a lot of characters meet their demise or catch you off guard? Well, so that's there. Somebody posted that everyone dies, which that's not true. Um, I was really upset that his wife didn't get killed because I couldn't stand her. Um, and yeah, I mean that they they pretty much just end up. Winning, except for the uh, the chick uh, that uh, Ruth that was working with him, um, she's the one that killed the the nephew, and the mom that wants revenge finds out that it's her, and so they they off her at the end, and I'm thinking probably because she's one of the only ones that maybe have like has like a career in the future here because now she like she put out that one movie about the. Um, that true story about the girl that ripped off all those rich people. So she, I think her like acting career is starting to maybe pick up. So they probably don't see her in future episodes of this, but yeah. And then you got the, the kids are like, I don't know. They, the kids are growing up. They all kind of understand everything that's going on in the business. Now they, they're apparently unstoppable because they have like every politician in their pocket that they need and all this stuff so it's almost like it ended like they're untouchable they they won the game they are finally free of having to worry about being killed by the cartel or anything and it just sounds like they didn't quite stick the landing on on portraying it on screen yeah everybody thought they were gonna die and it just sounds like they just ended up like winning weird yeah um yeah, who knows? Maybe they'll do a future episode here to wrap it all up. Uh, so, final verdict, favorite overall character and just moment from the show and series from its run. What, what would you say, you guys? Certain character seen from the series all four seasons that really, really uh, stuck with you all these seasons? Oh, well, Jason Bateman. I mean, it's the only reason to even watch the show. Oh, yeah. the, rest of them, the rest of them just kind of piss you off. <laughs> oh, no. At least for me, anyway. Yep. So, gotcha. Cool. So, yeah. Ozark. Especially his wife. God, I was really looking forward to her dying. <laughs> oh, no. So did, maybe you had to stick around after the credits. <laughs> well, because the last season, my the other two people that I couldn't stand at all, they got you know shot in the head on the very last episode, and I was like, yes, finally, don't have to watch them anymore. But no, just desserts for her. No. Well, that is the Ozarks. It's streaming. The new last set of episodes are now on Netflix. So. Uh, uh, the uh, next show we're going to be talking about here is uh, Halo. That's uh, and they just had their latest episode a few days ago. Six episodes into the nine episode season, and the major thing going on with this episode is that uh, John, you know, he kind of emerges from where Cortana forced him to pass out, where it looked like John was going to attack Halsley because he's finding out that Halsley's been lying to him all these years uh, about his origin and all that. We that, talked about this on the last show. 
uh, well, this this kind of takes it to a whole new new level where like John John really he touches the uh, artifact again one more time gets the full reveal of his uh, goes through the big seizures one more time finds out his complete origin story where uh, uh, like you know it gets re you know replaced uh, with getting kidnapped as a child and kind of forced into this whole UNSC Spartan training program and then Halsley the big thing here is where Halsley kind of owns up and admits to it all. And that plays out with the aftermath of the consequences with her and how she kind of gets removed from the whole Spartan project. But, you know, she's still connected in another way. So, and you can find out like the daughter, Miranda Keyes is now more involved now because now that Halsley is on the outs, that Keyes is more involved now. And uh, and then you get John interacting with the Covenant uh, human uh, that's uh, named McKee. We find out her name finally and they're, and she's trying, of course, she's working an angle because, you know, she she's making it seem like she got escaped or cast out by the Covenant. And now she's like under prisoner for the UNSC. And, and she's telling John, like, it's all about the keystones. You got to get the keystones and all that. So I don't know if it's if that's kind of and it's kind of I got on here. The episode closed with a massive contact with John and uh, Artifact again. But it leads to flashbacks with this, new, you know, the McKee, the Covenant uh, girl there, with the human having a seizure, and those two kind of setting up, setting up the next episode there. So that's what I got for notes for this episode. I don't know if that's ringing a bell. Yeah, no, I, I think I was uh, thinking of the episode prior to this one because I was the one prior to this one. That's where they had the big battle, right? Yep. Yeah, the super okay, big battle. Yeah. Yep. yeah so yeah, because these come out I think on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always get mixed up because we do this show on Wednesday. So. Yeah, this um, is a little bit of a little bit of a lapse between yeah. between recording and seeing it. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, this seemed like a little bit of a come down from the last episode. The last episode we got the big battles, so now they got to set well, up the story. We've already we've already established that's what they're doing through this entire show. It's mm -hmm. one good one, and then one slow one, and then one good one, and then one slow one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got all the big action ones in the previous episode. Now they gave give us an episode to breathe and set up set up the story prop, presumably for a big battle in episode nine. I'm guessing they're building up a story for this and next week here. Okay. So. But yeah, it was an okay episode, but yeah, kind of a, I could say it's probably a filler episode. You could probably get your just desserts on this uh, week just uh, by looking up just like a little recap. You probably don't need to watch the whole episode, but I, I'm enjoying the show still. So Oh I, yeah, it's still great. It, the acting and everything is uh, it's fantastic. I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. I can't, yeah, just a couple episodes left, so I can't wait to see how it wraps even, up. Even my daughter got into this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Heck well, yeah. I don't know if she should be watching it. She's oh. only eight, but... Get her the action <laughs> figures. <laughs> yeah. If they got action figures, that means it's okay for kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a video game, you know? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm sure she's watching worse stuff on YouTube. Yes. All right, well, we'll give a shout-out here, take a quick break for words from our last sponsor for today at CNH Insurance of East Grand Forks, where they began with the goal of building an agency with the highest of principles, personalized attention, and service. This concept remains to be their priority today. They strive to give everyone who walks through their doors special attention and the best customer service possible. Their agents have over 50 years of combined insurance and experience, and they are licensed in Minnesota, North Dakota, and Arizona. So for all your insurance needs, contact Justin, Jody, or Tammy at 218-773-0287 or stop by their location at 1427 Central Avenue Northwest in East Grand Forks. That's CNH Insurance of East Grand Forks. We here at GFBS insure through CNH and so should you. Mm. Yes. I, heard that ad. I have like all these ads just memorized. So that Miss Call ad was the River Cinema. Oh no. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Stay tuned, folks. We may have some special stuff coming up this weekend here. Just keep, keep plugged into GFBS on social media stuff for maybe some awesome weekend coverage of uh, the new Doctor Strange movie. Uh, got another TV show to hit up with that we're both big fans of, Winning Time. Uh, the latest episode hit a few, few weeks ago here. And now, Paul, it's the No, it hit last night. Yeah, uh, Sunday night's usually what I see is for when uh, the new Winning Time usually hits, uh, Sundays. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. But uh, but yeah, now they're the playoffs are here in winning time for the first season with the, the coaching staff here. So they're building up to the playoffs. They're, they wrap up the regular season in this episode, and they're the opening rounds of the playoffs, working their way through the playoffs in this episode, pretty much to the finals. And so yeah, so how how did you like the build up to the playoffs here, Paul? Uh, the I didn't like the build up to the playoffs just because of the, it focused uh, more on the the battle between who's going to be the coach. 
Yeah, that's okay. that was the main. Yeah, for like the first half of the episode, it's like it's coming down to decision time for Doctor Bus, John C. Riley's character, where he has to make the tough decision to go. Where McKinnon McKinnon says he's ready to get back from the hospital, get got cleared, or to stick with Westhead and and Pat Riley to coach the team. So they kind of bounce a lot back and forth, uh, questioning everybody. Yeah, and, and then you know they, they spent a lot of time on uh, was it Haywood, mm-hmm. and you know I don't. If it's true, I you know I don't know, but you know it talks about him just being pretty much addicted to Sub, um, some form of substance issues. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure it's like meth or heroin. Um, well, I, I suppose it would be heroin back then. Yeah, I know, uh, I know, in the late '70s, probably even into the early '80s, they, the NBA had tons of just bad drug drug substance issues. Like players were literally passing out on the court. No. Yeah, it was bad. So I have no idea if this was dramatized a bit or if uh, Spencer Haywood did have some drug issues or if they just, you know, they just kind of just, I hope they didn't uh, exaggerate it for the sake because that's a serious thing to really just say, oh, let's go all out with this because they kind of get into some dark stuff in here with with Haywood battling like, I kind of understand what you think of this. It kind of leads up to a really big scene towards the end of the episode where, you know, he kind of has a scene early on where Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is like, hey, man, don't mess up. Mm -hmm. We mess up one more time. This is on you. And they've they've been putting a lot more of uh, uh, Jabbar in in the last couple of episodes. He's he's had quite a few lines. So Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm glad to finally see him have a bit more of a presence on the show. I know, like, you know, they're advertising a lot for this mostly being, you know, the Magic Johnson-led vehicle. Of course, you know, Magic Johnson's a huge star, but, you know, so was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and he was a very minor character in, like, the first half of the season. So I'm really glad to see this episode. He has a few big scenes. And yeah. how did you like that big big heart-to-heart where he, you know, pretty much delivers the news to, to Haywood that, hey, man, you're off the team, and, you know, Haywood has a big heart-to-heart talk about, you know, how, how you know, he... Just had his dark past. A very, very emotional scene. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good, good show. Yeah, and then I really liked how this episode closed out here too, where uh, Cream catches Magic Johnson in the arena, pra- doing some practice, late night practice, and he's trying to practice Cream's trademark skyhook move. Yep. Uh, I really and so Cream. The, the, this episode closes with uh, Cream teaching him the skyhook, and I just had me just, just, just super Jones in for this final episode. Oh, so the next. Oh wait, I, I think there's two more. I'm sorry, two, two more. more. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. No. I, the only thing I don't like about the show is how they keep cutting it to make it look like a like a '70s type of film. Oh yeah. I, I mean, they're trying to do it for some type of effect, but I don't know. I just think it looks kind of dumb. I, I think I'm kind of leaning in that direction too. I think at this point, at first it seemed kind of cool, but now it seems like you no. Know, they either got to stick with it all the way or or film it with modern technology because it it's jumping so much back and forth that yeah, yeah, it could be trying, a little jarring. Yeah, they're trying to do the old 70s film, you know, where you get the burn marks and stuff in it. I don't know. Yeah. It's just kind of silly. Yeah. Actually, I take that back. I thought this was the eighth episode. This is the ninth episode. It's a 10-episode season. So, yeah, next week is the last last episode of this season. And they did get renewed for a season two. But, yeah, so uh, so see if, you know, they, they make the finals. So you could either look at an almanac and spoil it for yourself or tune in next week to see if the Lakers win the finals. So right over there? <laughs> I'm just laughing at something. What's what what I'm what's? I'm just laughing at something. You'll see. Uh oh. All right. So you got 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 fun quick take in store for us here. Oh uh, yeah, but no, we can get going with our. All right, we're we're almost there, but uh, uh, actually, we're, we, we this is where we throw it to the audience. Where for our WTF are you watching segment? Uh, we didn't get any this week, but we definitely want to hear from you here. So anyone watching live or just wa- listening to this on the archive here, uh, if you want to go to gfbestsource.com and click on the Contact Us link on the top of the web page or just send us an email, local at gfbestsource.com. Send us a quick under 100-word response, what you've been watching lately, and you know we'll, we'll definitely read and react to it on the show here. So, yeah, as you can see in the background here, give it your thumbs up, thumbs down here, and, yeah, we... We will, we will, we will, we want to hear from what you guys have been saying. Clue us into shows we may not be covering that we should be watching. So, yeah, local at gfbestsource.com or the contact us link on gfbestsource.com. So, quick takes. Katie, you've been, you got, you're definitely, you got something in yeah. store for us. I can see it. What, what do you got for us for your quick take? So, um, see, boys, as usual. Why'd you turn the camera on? <laughs> You'll see. So, the video that I watched on this week, it's it's just the picture. I'm just laughing at this picture. It's so funny. Uh oh. Um, so, what they did is that they actually cut a car in half and they drove it. And I don't know how to explain it without just showing the viewers. So, go to camp, go to the. Oh, I guess, yeah. Oh, uh oh. Oh, oh, no. Is that not going to work? No. 
Green screens what? being. Oh, oh wait, there we go. So what, they actually were able to drive that vehicle sawn in half. Yeah. They're even with the back half dragging. Yeah. Oh they're my. Not, they're not the first ones to do that. They are. You've seen no. this done before, Paul? It's so yeah. funny. Seriously? I guess yeah, I. That's what I was talking about. Cause it's so stupid. I, I, I've, I've funny. heard as uh, vehicles like doing special for for movies, filming special shots with special vehicles sawn in half. Like seriously. And uh, you know, Fast Five. Oh. There's a ridiculous, you know, the where they're the safe. They're ch driving the safe all around Brazil there, and the end the big that in order to get the shots with that, because of course that there you're there's no way this should be possible mode. Uh, they they got they sawed off a, v a vehicle and like the front third of a vehicle fit it inside the big safe and they're driving the safe and that's how they pulled it off in the movie so that's how i've heard of it being done before but being done like that where they actually got the vehicle <laughs> in the open that's yeah i don't know paul you said you've seen this then too other other places oh, yeah. or i'm sure i have i don't know it was just dorky and then they drove it on their like dirt track or whatever but besides yeah that's what i was laughing about because it's so funny but well i think it is and other than sea boys um lots of tennis as usual and big rivalry tomorrow Best of luck. Big local yep. rivalry. Going to crush it, right? Oh, yeah. Central, definitely. Heck, yeah. Best of luck. We'll give you the applause. Best mm -hmm. of luck. Yes, yes. Yeah. Paul, quick takes for the week. Oh, yeah. Um, like I said, uh, catching up on outer range. Still no idea what the hell is going on. I um, watched, like, the first two episodes, and I just I couldn't do it. <laughs> well, what didn't do it for you? Well, it was confusing, like, they're, I don't even know the premise. They were like on an island. The last episode I watched, did you watch season one? Or have you seen, what have you? No, they're, 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 they haven't even finished the first season. Oh, they haven't? Oh, well, I only watched the first two episodes and that's it. Oh, you sure it was out of range because there's no islands? Really? Yeah. Well, we're, they're, what's they're, on, they're on a farm. Shoot. They're on a cattle that. farm. Because it's, it's on Paramount Plus, right? Yeah. Out of range? I'm thinking of something else. I take that back. The island? Never mind. What did, what did well, you well, watch? What show was it? No. Now I have to remember what it's called. It's a Netflix series. I'll think of it. I'll let you know when I come back to it. <laughs> but yeah, the one thing I, I do think is kind of neat, though, it seems like they keep releasing it in uh, episodes of, like, two episodes at a time. Oh, for Outer Range, like two episode drops? Yeah, so that, that's kind of neat. And, yeah, I mean, I, I'm still interested to figure out what, what's going to take place here, but... What? I thought of it. So you said Outer Range. I was thinking of Outer Banks. Outer Banks, okay. That's what I was thinking of. So... Oh. so all right, so so no. we'll, we'll wrap up with Paul, then we'll get we'll get your thoughts on that show here. So, Paul, Outer Range. Oh, there's no thought. She only watched one episode, and she stopped watching. Uh, it. I thought it was Outer Banks. I just said Outer <laughs> Range, so I got no thoughts on that. It's, it's just <laughs> I only watched it because there was a Hawkeye. That's it. For, oh, Jeremy Renner's in it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, I, oh, I, you I, like I don't know. Dale? You like Jeremy Renner? <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Renner, everyone's favorite Hawkeye. <laughs> wait, who is he? You said Hawkeye. Oh, you said. Hi. Oh, I thought hot. you said. <laughs> you, you, oh, you said hot guy. Yeah, I thought <laughs> you said hot guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I'm giving myself all the fail. <laughs> so I was like, it's like, yeah, there's a hot guy in it, and you're just like instantly like Jimmy Renner. <laughs> oh gosh, I I literally thought you said hot guy. Yeah, that He's is. He's the guy from my story. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I take so, it all back. That's take fantastic. <laughs> That too much, fantastic. too much miscommunication there. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just giving myself all the dumb sound effects for that one. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so out of rage. Uh, good to see if that goes anywhere. And uh, my other quick take is, I swear to God, if you talk about Picard again, I'm gonna kill the soundboard. Oh no, you don't want to hear. Well, did you see it there? No, I just don't care. Nobody oh. cares about Picard. It sucks. It sucked three I'm episodes ago. Yes, yes. <laughs> it is definitely on the downswing. Not digging it. One more episode left. Well, so. Oh, okay. Well, if you only got one more episode. I'll, 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 I'll touch on it last week with the wrap-up. If there's Yeah, there's one episode left, so I'll, I'll wrap it up last week. I'll save a discussion this week other than saying I, I'm looking forward to it being wrapped up. So. Okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, other than that, Moon Knight episode five, and that that's not as bad. It's actually starting to get get better there with some interesting flashbacks and origin stories and split more split personality hijinks and... Uh, and this episode actually had a talking hippo named Towerwet. And I guess I looked up the, the, the it's wow. actually a big character in the comic. A talking you, hippo. How do you make a hippo call? Yeah, the oh. CG. Expensive, oh, expensive right. CG that Disney can afford. 
But uh, I'm like, this seems really silly, and they're on a time traveling sand boat. But was he, do you, I just got to ask, was he hungry? Uh, no, no, the, the hippo was not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> At least not this episode. Maybe next week. Maybe next week. But uh, it's it, it actually. So many levels. But yeah, so they're long. they're. It is actually starting to show some promise. They may be able to turn it around, but I'm not getting my hopes up too much. So we'll, we'll see how it goes next week. So uh, unless you guys got anything else here, we'll wrap this up. Oh, hippos are cool. Hippos are cool. Uh, yeah, they're, ter- they're, they're terrifying. Ugly. Katie's a fan of hippos. Hungry, hungry hippos, a board game? Oh, well, I guess. But I think they're ugly in general. Do you know what vicious hippos are? They'll oh. literally like bite canoes in half and try to eat people. Bears probably do the same thing. I don't. I've never seen a bear bite a canoe in half. <laughs> okay. Oh, we have an what audience. The? Hey, there's a bear over there in the back. No, no, that's kid has a squeak toy stuck in its throat. Oh no. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gosh, we got we got our own wild wilderness yeah. going on in the background here. But with that, we will wrap things up for the week. Thank you everyone for tuning in to today's episode of Big Screens and TV Streams. If you want to get even more movie coverage on GFBS, make sure to tune in this Friday at 9. Got an awesome episode of Icky Ichabod's Weird Cinema where Ichabod and Paul will be reviewing the 1984 classic, one of Paul's favorites, uh, the Drew Barrymore uh, the Firestarter. Yeah, and that's another one in the theaters that I'm gonna have to go check out. Yep, that's that's they got a re- lot of theater action coming up here in the next couple of weeks. They got yeah, it's gonna be hitting theaters here with a remake in a couple of weeks here. So yeah, I can check that out this Friday at nine. We will get like to give a shout out once again to today's sponsors at the Poor House, O for Heaven's Cakes, and CNH Insurance. We welcome you to join us live for all future episodes every Wednesday at 2 p.m. on GFBSSource.com and find our past episodes by subscribing to GFBS everywhere you find podcasts. So many thanks to uh, Fire, Fire, Firestarter fan and Picard, not so much of a fan. Paul. <laughs> many thanks to Slam and producer Katie. And See many, that? That means dub. Taking du- the W. You'll be, the getting, win, be getting the dub the double, this the double week. L. That's two L's. That's two L's. That's two L's. Uh, many thanks to everyone tuning in and having us as part of your day. Got a post. We will see you all next week. Goodbye.